Well, good evening to everyone. I pray that everybody has had a, a, a great day today as well as um, an awesome week. This is the Wednesday after celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So to God be the glory for the great things that he is doing. Amen. So blessings and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you can see me, say, I can see you and hear you. Can y'all hear me and see me? Praise God. Okay, there you go. You're coming in now. Thank you. I see three people that have come in. Azalita and Carolyn Hathorn and Regina. God bless each and every one of you. This is the Wednesday after Easter, the Wednesday after celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And truly, truly, what a mighty, mighty God we serve. Hey, Flora and Regina, come on in, declaring something positive immediately, immediately after you came in here. I promise you the Holy Spirit spoke something to you that will make a difference in somebody's life. So come on in, declaring something positive as folks are coming in. Hey, Brenda and Betty, God bless each and every one of you. Come on in and to our God be the glory for the things that he continues to do in each and every one of our lives. Amen. Betty Meeks, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. I just felt a need for an, an urgent prayer miracle right then. <laughs> the Lord just spoke to me and said, just begin to pray for a miracle through the power of prayer that somebody needs right now. I can't stop talking enough about miracles because the greatest miracle that we ever experienced was what we just finished celebrating on this past Sunday, the miracle power of our Lord and Savior getting up out of the grave and letting everyone know that he is true to what he said he would do. What I'm going to do today, amen. Yeah, the prayer list. Got that, Emma? Going to pray right now in the name of Jesus, and I want you to pray with me. For those names and things that are on the prayer list, the Lord is telling us to do that right now in the beginning. And I believe in the next uh, 28 minutes, we're going to begin to see our Lord move in a powerful way. So to Morning Star, to Victory, and for those that are joining us all over everywhere, thank you so much. Hey, Sylvia, God bless you. Cassandra Graham, God bless you. Fanny, good to see you in here. Pam Jackson, got you in prayer, Pam. Text me, Pam, and let me know how you're doing in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, Anita. Hey, Maggie. God bless you. Yes, God is so, so good. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Hold on for me one minute here, you all. I want to tap into something that, um, yep, have your way, God, in our time of meeting tonight. And we will truly, truly celebrate you, you for Fanny, your goodness Mike. and your mercy. Amen. Hey, Kimberly. Good to see you in there, Kimberly. Praise God. Praise God. Well, as you all can see, I am in here tonight. I'm feeling great. Uh, just to give you a quick update, I went to the doctor on yesterday. He said things are coming along well, but he wants me to make sure that I spend six good weeks of healing. He says it's important that I develop good, great uh, scar tissue and I cannot uh, do any heavy, heavy lifting for another three weeks. You know, like uh, suitcases, heavy bags, uh, pushing anything. So I'm, I'm really trying to keep myself, but I feel great. So I guess it's the healing on the inside that's still taking place from what the doctor was saying. OK, so I do want to inform you all of that. And to our God be the glory. So thank each and every one of you that um, prayed for me and has continued to pray for me. All right. Let me start out with this and then we're going to share a little bit. And I bless each and every one of you for coming in. Rick, God bless you. Michelle and Tazinka. Amen. Trina, praise God. T Trina, tell your mother I said hi. Charlene, I see you. Thank God. So let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we are coming in, Father, as people were coming on tonight immediately you told me just begin to pray and to begin to pray about miracles god about miracles we cannot say enough 
about your miraculous power. So God, every name that's on the prayer list that Emma put up there, the prayer list, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are already moving on the names on the prayer list, anything that people are experiencing, God. We are believers, a group of people, a group of believers that truly believe that the prayers of the righteous make tremendous power available according to the book of James, God, according to the book of James. So, God, we thank you for this power that has been released for you to move in, in, in agreement, God, move under your anointing. And as people are agreeing with me, people as people are listening right now, we thank you, God, for what you already done. It's such a privilege to call you Father, such a privilege, Lord, to be able to communicate with you in a simple way. And we are not bound by anything, God. We are free, and we are free because we pray the truth, God. We pray according to your divine word. And I thank you for the moments right now, even those, God, I believe there are 10 people that tapped in here tonight that needed prayer immediately. And God, I believe that you're doing something immediately in their lives right now in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you for moving on Cassandra Phillips Williams right now, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that you are opening doors for Cassandra Graham right now, God. I believe that you are giving her a fresh release of finances. As I'm praying, Cassandra Graham, God just spoke that to me. I believe that you're doing a fresh uh, release of finances. I see you, Shay Shayla Nichols. God bless you. Amen. Immediately. That's what, I, that's what I got. So, Father, I thank you right now. See, Francis is putting, uh, Fanny put, pray for my brother who had open heart surgery. That's why I love to move by the power of the Holy Spirit and not just coming on Wednesday night to be coming. We come in the name of the Lord and we come being led by the power of the Holy Spirit. So whatever the Lord say, do. So each and every one of you that are tapped in tonight, the Lord is truly doing something fresh in your night in your life right now during this night of refreshing because we're being led by the holy spirit so i want you to agree with me right now i want you to tap in with me right now amen i want you to free yourself up for the truth free yourself up for the truth of god to work and move through the spirit of truth and that is the power of the holy spirit praise god so lord i think that um nichols god i think that you're moving in uh shayla and i hope i said your name right uh shayla uh, the situation, God, that she's having, you're revealing some things, you're uncovering some things, and I believe you're going to continue to remain faithful in her life, God. She cannot be shut down. She cannot be shut up. I tell you what she can, God, she can do. God, she can look up and trust you. I pray that you're giving her wisdom right now. Shayla, I pray that uh, God is giving you wisdom right now, Sister Nichols, that God is giving you wisdom right now and a boldness to trust God or whatever the enemy is trying to bring against you. Yes, Nichols, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I need everybody just put hashtag amen as a power of agreement. Put hashtag, hey, Thomasa, amen as a power of agreement right now. Hashtag amen. Let me start seeing that as a power of, agree as a power of agreement. You know, because we, we, we got to, Prophetess Deborah Hampton, we have to, Continue to agree with God for mighty things. Got that? We cannot sit on things. Okay. Now, what I want to do is y'all are typing an amen. So be it. And know that the Lord is moving on your amen. No, amen means so be it. Know that God is moving on that. We have to talk this way. We have to believe this way. And we have to communicate this way. Got it? There's so much going on right now. It really is. And I think that God has really positioned the believers for such a time as this. I truly, truly believe this for such a time as this. Hey, I see my wife is tapped in also. God bless you, baby. I need you to continue to agree with me right now in the name of our Lord. Brina, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Joseph, JB, come on, in the name of our Lord. Yes, 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 in the name of our Lord. Kenyatta Payton, God bless you, in the name of our Lord, hey, Jesus Christ right now. Now, as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me and said that some of you came in here like, I want to really start off with prayer. Keisha, you got that? In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we want to receive the supernatural move of God right now. Let's declare this with me. The supernatural move of God right now. 
Yes, 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 definitely. Hey, Brett, God bless you in the name of our Lord. Now, what I want to do is touch bases with you all because I know everybody didn't get a chance to see me minister. You know, I go, I truly go over things for a reason because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, on Sunday, the Lord had me to minister the wisdom of three days. You got that? On Sunday, the Lord had me to wisdom the, the, the wisdom of three days. Now, I want to do something tonight in the time that we have left. Amen. We've got about 20 more minutes and God's going to move on and stay true to that. Unless the Lord is going to move another way. The wisdom of three days. I see people putting hashtag three. I see you, Jacqueline. Amen. I see you, April. Your hashtag three. The wisdom of three days. There is more for me to uncover there. Amen. I may do some more on that next Sunday. Amen. By the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hey, Brenda. Yeah, but the wisdom of three days. And um, I I got the Holy Spirit spoke to me and and just had me to begin to meditate as we we're approaching the resurrection Sunday. Now we're just coming off the resurrection Sunday. We just finished celebrating Easter, but the celebration never stops. You got it. The celebration of the resurrection in our lives is 24-7. It's each and every day in the life of the believer. I want y'all to remember that now. Yeah, so that's, Jesus said three days. That's what he said. And traditionally what happens is in the Jewish tradition, uh, they believe that um, it's in three days, people are dead. You get three days. That's why Jesus said, give me three days. He could have picked four. He could have picked 40 days. He could have picked one day. But what Jesus was doing, he was declaring in the atmosphere for those that knew that after three days, it was considered that somebody is dead. You know, there's no getting up. If they didn't get up in those three days, they truly were dead. And that was a tradition that they believed. They would even go back and check folks out for three days in the Jewish tradition. You all can go and do research on this to make sure that people were dead. So Jesus picked that three for a reason. He picked that three because he knew that was something that people would identify with. And for those of us that believe, we need to identify with the wisdom of three days. You got that? And what did we do? God had me look at a couple of scriptures. One of the scriptures that God had me to look at was Mark, the eighth chapter, verse 31, because Jesus kept telling them. He kept telling them. Here's what Jesus said. He began to tell them the son of man must suffer. This is one of the scriptures that Jesus had there. He began to tell them the son of man, that the son of man must suffer many terrible things. That's what Jesus said now. Be rejected by the elders. You got it. The leading priests. The teachers of religious law, he will be killed. Jesus said, guess what? I will be killed. But, you know, I don't give up my life. You get it? I, I know nobody kills me. I lay down my life for a reason. You got it? But in their minds, he went through the most cruel thing you can go through. He went through a crucifixion, the suffering on the cross. He said he will be killed. But three days later, y'all got there, everybody just say three days later in your spirit. Just say three days later. But three days later, he would rise from the dead. I, I talked about that Sunday. That's why I always tell folks, you can, you can stone me, but just give me three days. That three-day principle and that three-day promise, that is power in what Jesus kept saying. Amen. Now that was Mark, the eighth chapter, verse 31. And then if you look at Mark, the ninth chapter, verse, verse 31, real quick, we'll take a look at that. Oh, excuse me. Take a look at that also. Mark the ninth chapter verse. Uh, let me see. Mark ninth chapter verse thirty one. Want to take a look at that one also? For he wanted to spend more time with his disciples and teach them. Y'all got that right there. He wanted to spend more time with his disciples and teach them. Teach them what he was teaching them, and wanted to, them to remember that he was going to go through some things like us. We go through things. You get it? Cannot get away from going through things in this world. But we ought, we ought to always remember what Jesus said. Jesus said it right here. He wanted to spend more time with his disciples and teach them. And he said to them, the son of man, here he is saying it again, the son of man will be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. All of us got enemies. Always remember that. Everybody's not your friend. You get it? All of us, the wisdom of three days. But he kept saying, just give me three days. 
and let them do what they want to do. Let them say what they want to say. But just give me three days to carry out what the father had for my life. Give me three days. Watch this now to take on what I would go through, what you would go through. And what we're going through is just what sin brought into this world. Does that bless anybody tonight? I hope you're being blessed by that right there. And we go, look, we teach this every Resurrection Sunday, but you cannot teach this enough. Look what Jesus said right here. The Bible said here that Jesus wanted to spend more time with his disciples and teach them. And he said to them, to them the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of the enemies, of his enemies. You got it? And a lot of time we get betrayed, you all. You feel like you've been betrayed. In my life, I felt like I've been betrayed, but guess what? I remember what Jesus did for us. How can I get beyond feeling betrayed? I'm going to tell you in a minute. We talked about it Sunday. He said he will be killed, but three days later, what will he do? He will rise from the dead. Jesus, teach me to understand the wisdom of three days. You could have picked one day. You could have picked one hour, but you picked three days to let the world know that when they say three days somebody is dead, that you can get up out of that. Just give me three days. You got it? three hours, three months, three years. But I know there's power in what Jesus said. Now, and the next thing the Lord had me to do was go to Mark, the 10th chapter, verse 33 through 34. Let's look at that. Got that? Mark, the 10th chapter, verse 33 through 34. Here's 33. Listen, he said, we're going to Jerusalem where the son of man will be what? Betrayed. To the leading priests and the teachers of religious law, they will sentence him to die and hand him over to who? Hand him over to the Romans. Now, this is what Jesus said. They will sentence him to die and hand him over to the Romans. You got it? That's 33. And then there's 34. Here we go again. They will mock him, spit on him, get flog him with a whip. You got it? And kill him. And a lot of times when we live this life, we literally feel like everything that Jesus went through there for us, we feel spiritually like we're going through that. You know, especially when things aren't going our way. But guess what? Jesus said, but after three days, he will rise again. There it is again. The wisdom of three days. And I know some of you remember this from Sunday, but I'm getting even excited and I'm even feel moved by God. You got this again. Why? Because Jesus said there was wisdom in picking three days. Why? I'm putting a declaration in the air and I want to make believers out of folks and we're believers. But here's what I really want you all to get. So what did the Lord tell me? The Lord said that when Jesus got up on that third day, he got up with all power in his hand. And God had me to say, the wisdom of three days are these three things right here. You all got to remember this. Redeeming power. Go ahead and put that in there for me, Kim. The first thing was redeeming power. Here we are. We are past Easter. You got it. This is Wednesday. Uh, the, it, Easter was Sunday. We traditionally celebrated this past Sunday. You got that. And here we are. The Wednesday past Easter. The Wednesday past Resurrection Sunday. And God wants us to remember that we got to continue the celebration. We got to continue the resurrection. But what's the key to that? The wisdom of three days, God released it. He released redeeming power. Y'all remember that? Redeeming power. I want you all to get this, each and every one of you. I'm going to put it up here. Thank you, Kim. The first thing he did, he released what? Redeeming power. What does it mean to have redeeming power? It means to buy back, to recover. You got it? To recover. You get to exchange, to convert, to discharge, to discharge, to obtain the release of or restoration from captivity, to obtain release or resurrection, restoration from captivity. Let me stop right there and explain this. You got it? Some of you may be going through something. You feel challenged right now, but you got to remember the wisdom of three days. God has released in us redeeming power. He has, and that's what Jesus did. But I need you to believe this. Who believe this? Who believe this? Amen. You got it. Joyce, I like that. And today is April the 3rd. Thank you, Joyce. Joyce Moses, thank you so much, prophetess, for reminding us that Good way to catch that revelation and the power of the Holy Spirit. You got that? Here's the three things he released. Redeeming power, which gives us the opportunity to recover some things. And if you feel like the enemy has taken some things from you, 
you got to remember that the wisdom of three days give us redeeming power. And I want everybody to put right now, I've been redeemed. Put hashtag, I've been redeemed. And since I've been redeemed, there are some things that our Lord wants us to redeem also. You got that? First of all, we're going to redeem it spiritually. And then naturally, physically, the Lord will begin to release things in our lifetimes that we felt like has been taken from us. You got that? And more than anything, it's that relationship with God. You got it? Restoration. You get here's the night of refreshing, but we've been what redeeming. There is restoration in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The next thing is rescuing power. What well, time goes by so fast when we're having fun? You got that? Here we are again. We celebrated Resurrection Sunday. What are we doing after the resurrection? We should be walking in redeeming power, and we should be exercising in rescuing power, which means saving from danger deliverance, release or relief and liberation. I like that saving from danger. And some of you, somebody might feel like you're going through a dangerous situation, but you got to remember the wisdom of three days gives you what? Rescuing power. You got, we've been redeemed and we've been rescued, but we got to walk in the power, the ability that God has given us to get beyond what mocks us. You get it? What criticize us or what hurt us? It's going to come. But guess what? The Lord said, give yourself some time. Trust me to work things out that you think have destroyed you. Because that's what Jesus said. But God just said, hey, I'm going to give you wisdom. And in three days, get up. I still believe in the power of Jesus getting up in three days. We're past the resurrection Sunday. But a lot of folks just go back to being what we usually were. That is power in the resurrection. You got that? Redeeming power, rescuing power, rescuing power. And here's the third one, resurrection power. That's the act of rising from the dead and to return to life. You got it? You got the act of rising from the dead. Who's ever been hurt emotionally? And sometimes you feel like, man, I just feel like I'm dead. I don't want to do anything. But guess what? Because of the wisdom of three days, you have the opportunity to rise up out of that situation and that circumstance. You get it? To rise up, not just from a negative, but to rise up and experience an abundance of joy, an abundance of love, an abundance of prosperity, an abundance of positiveness. You got it? It's not just always coming out of a grave. You get it? We have resurrection power to embrace the grace of God to live an abundant life because he said, I come to give life and to give it more what? Abundantly. So guess what? How can I stay in death when God has given us an abundant life? That's the wisdom of three days. Amen. Are you all walking with me in this thing? God is so good. Natasha said there is so much insight and discernment of what the enemy will do. You got it. But even with the planning that took place, the most powerful insight was the three days. And that's why God gave me that, Natasha, because God really wants us to embrace this. This is for somebody. You may feel like you're going through a fearful situation, but you got to hold on to the wisdom of three days. What's, what is the wisdom of three days? Got it? Redeeming power, rescuing power, and resurrection power. That's what it is. Oh, God is so good. I need everybody to put, I got the power. Come on, Tomasa, put it in there. I got the power. You got the power. Sure, oh, I've been redeemed to an abundant life. You do. But I want y'all to believe this with me. Just put, I got the power and put, I believe. Do you think Jesus just got up out of the grave for us just to talk about him getting out of the grave? No. He want us to put in action the redeeming power, the rescuing power, and the resurrection power. You got it? Look, I experienced surgery on March 11th. I'm still going through the healing process, but how can I go through this? You know why? Because I have redeeming power, rescuing power, and resurrection power. And I'm using the wisdom that the doctor's telling me physically about my body, not to do anything uh, strenuous, not to lift anything heavy for another three weeks, give it full, a full six weeks. That's the wisdom of three days. But guess what? Spiritually, I have the spirit to say, I'm going forth in the name of Jesus, but I will go forth in wisdom. And that's a word for somebody right now. What are the people? 
Donald, are you walking in your power? Donald, you just went through uh, shoulder surgery. It's only because of the power of three days, Betty Mac Williams. Amen. I want you all to really embrace the resurrection of Easter Sunday. You got it. Just don't save it for once a year. You all, each and every one of us should be walking in resurrection power each and every day of our lives. You got it. And don't find it a, a strange thing. If sometimes you feel like you're going through a grave situation or like somebody's put you in a grave mentally or like a lot of dirt have been thrown over you. You got it. But guess what? You have the power to continue to get up each and every day of your life. Come on through. Help me teach this, Rosalind. You're going to do this. You got the power. But what kind of power do we have? Rescuing power. You got it. Redeeming power. And what? Resurrection power. Let me read you this next this next thing. Then I got, a, I think, a great conclusion for each and every one of us. Amen. Yes. And one of the verses I read in, in John, the second chapter, verse 18 through 22. I'm going to just paraphrase that. Thank you, uh, Kim, for putting that in there. You got the power. Y'all hold on to that. I really want you to believe you got the power. You look, there's all kind of power. There's nuclear power. You get it. There's gas power. I mean, you're talking about like fuel, the fuel, electric power. But there is no power like the power of God. None. Nothing. This power that we got can come from nothing man made. The power that we got comes from God made. Hashtag made by God. That's the kind of power we got. Made by God to let the devil know you cannot keep a believer down. You got it? Look, the devil brought hell, the grave. Look, Jesus went to Calvary. All that came at Jesus. But you can't keep down what God raises up. Why? Because we got the power to go through hell. We got the power to go through hell. You hear me? To go through it, to go through the grave. Amen. To be buried in a lot of stuff, buried in foolishness, buried in craziness, buried in disappointment, buried in look. Depression, just buried in a whole lot of stuff. But Jesus said, guess what? I told you three days. And when I got up in three days, I've given you redeeming power, rescuing power, and resurrection power to not stay buried in a whole lot of stuff. Let me read this right. Look what he did to the Jews. They kept looking for a sign. They kept looking for a sign because look, they saw signs. Because what happened was, if you read this entire chapter here, the second chapter, they were really into signs, you know. And Jesus told them, you can destroy this temple, is what he said here. You can destroy this temple, but guess what? He said, in three days, I'll get up. Three days. He said, that's the sign. Three days. And they said it took 46 years to build this temple. They were talking about a physical temple, but Jesus was talking about his body. And you all, we need to keep that in mind. These bodies that we have right now, they are dying. But the spirit that's in us cannot be buried. And Jesus got a whole new body for us, you got it, that the enemy cannot mess with. The only reason this body right now that I'm touching, the only reason it could survive surgery because of the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me get this right here one more time. So Jesus said that, it's, and they said it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. Jesus said, I sure will, because I'm talking about the temple of what? The temple of my body. And they wanted a sign from Jesus. If you read the beginning of this chapter, here's the thing that got me. Jesus, I'm going to give you a sign. You look, he had healed the sick, <laughs> given the blind man sight. They wanted more signs. But you know what gets me, you all? A lot of us, I told the people Sunday, stop at the sign versus going on to the Savior. You got it? <laughs> Don't stop at the signs. Jesus gave all kinds of signs, but they were for us to believe and take the sign of belief and go to the Savior. You got it? Don't let what God does in your life, miraculous things, don't let that be a stop sign. Let that be a sign for you to just move on to the Savior and walk in rescuing power, redeeming power, and resurrection power. Y'all got that? Don't stop at the sign. You got it? Keep going to the Savior. And embrace the power that he has given each and every one of us. Okay. Amen. Y'all got that? Everybody just put, don't stop at the sign. Don't stop at the sign. Mm -hmm. He took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 5,000. That was a sign. But some people just stopped at the sign and never understood the Savior. He healed a woman that had been bleeding for 12 long years. 
You got it. And he healed her and people knew it. But some folks just stopped at the what? At the sign. He showed up a wedding. You got it. And turned the water to wine. And that was the first miracle. That was the first sign that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did. But guess what? Some folks stopped at the sign because they didn't believe beyond the sign and trust the Savior. Are y'all getting this? Where's your belief level at tonight? Where's mine? You know what? God does a lot of miracle signs and wonders in my life, but I'm not going to stop there. I want to make sure that I understand he that does the miracles and he that does the signs in our lives. I got to get to the Savior. How do I do that, Brenda? How do I do that, Brenda Goodwin? By trusting him. How do I do that, Donald? By trusting him. Don't stop at the miracle. Embrace the miracle worker. You get it? Come on, help me out, Lee Ernest. You're going to help me preach this. Maggie, you're going to help me. Shirley May, you're going to help me preach this. Don't stop at the miracle. Don't stop at the sign. You got it? Don't do that. I, you remember in the, uh, in, I was watching the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments, and when Moses came back to Pharaoh, he put his rod down, and his rod turned into a snake, and then the Pharaoh musicians put down their rod, and their rod turned into a snake, and then uh, Moses' rod that turned into a snake ate up the snakes of Pharaoh. You got it? They were all signs. You got it? So a lot of folk can do signs. But what about the signs that God put in our lives to have us to believe in the Savior? You got it? You got to believe in the Savior. How do I do that? Believing in his resurrection power. Come on, Carrie Sharp. Help me teach this. Come on, Francis. Help me teach this to Lita and, and April and Emma. Oh, y'all got it? How many folk feel like you're going to keep going to the Savior? I love the miracles. Amen. But some folks only follow Jesus for a sign, not because he was a savior. You get it? Not because he was sent by God. You got it? And we got to continue. We got to continue to to flow and do much better. I keep dropping my phone. I'm getting excited about what our God, what our God just continued to do. And to our God be all the glory. Now, look, I got that out, but I got one other thing we're going to end with tonight. I'm going to push past my 30 minutes. I've been in here 32 minutes, so I'm going to take another 15 minutes. I usually take 30 minutes, but I, I feel I feel something pushing me. It must be the power of God. That's what I'm talking about right now in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You can destroy this temple, but guess what? In three days, I will. I will get up. That's what he said. Amen. God is so, so good. Let's go to Ephesians. I want to pray this prayer. I'm going to read this prayer because some of y'all didn't get this on Sunday. Let's go to Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 19 and 20. I love going over things because it becomes so clear. Let me see if we got that in the amen. Ephesians, the um, first chapter, verse 19 and 20. Let me see if Kim put that in there for me. If not, it should be coming. Thank you, Kim. You're amazing. You and Keller do good work helping me out right here. Here's what he prayed. Now, look, I want y'all to catch this. Here is your redeeming power. Here is your rescuing power. Here is your resurrection power. I want to take my time and say this. Now, look, after all that, it's Wednesday night. You get it? We have celebrated Easter. We've celebrated Resurrection Sunday. But I got an issue. I got a problem that a lot of us stop right there. And just look at the empty tomb and don't get to the Savior. You got it? Look, the tomb is empty. That's what make our God so amazing. Let me deal with this also. Guess what? And what God wants to do is to empty some things out of our lives. You got There's some things in the tomb of my life that don't need to be there. So whatever's in the tomb of your life, keep your tomb empty and walk in your resurrection power. You got, don't put something in the tune of your mind and bury it there and just let it rot and become rigor mortis and and let death set in. We have life. Amen. So I'm speaking to somebody right now and the Lord wants to empty some tunes in your life. Get anything in your life that has buried itself. Guess what? Power to resurrection. The wisdom of three days is about emptying the tunes in our lives. Oh, somebody come on and preach with me right here. Amen. You got it? (laughs) This is what the power of the resurrection is about emptying the tombs in our lives. Spiritual tombs. You get it? 
What has the enemy buried in our lives and wanted to stay there and cause us not to go forward and walk in the resurrection power of God? So tonight we declare, you get it, we empty, we get the depression out of the tomb of our lives, you get the jealousy, you get it, the not being obedient. You know, these are things that just bring for the wages of sin is what? Death, death, love, tombs. You get it? And wants to dwell in the tomb of our mind. But the Lord said, because Jesus said the wisdom of three days, you got it. We're going to get the things out of the tomb of our lives. Amen. Yeah, yeah. My tomb is empty. It's nothing in my life. You got it. Jesus, because of his resurrection power, because of the wisdom of three days, he has gotten up. And when he got up, everything else had to get up. Amen. You got there's no hell in the tomb of my life. There's nothing in my life that need to be buried. Everything in my life has risen. You know why? Because we serve a risen Christ. That is so good, Holy Ghost. Everything in my life that is of God has gotten up. You got it? <laughs> and there's nothing in my life. There's nothing in the tomb of my life. My relationship, the tomb is empty in my life. Come on now. Get that stuff out of there in the name of Jesus. Amen. You got that, Re Regina Petaway Williams? Help me out. Wow. Yeah, you got that right, Carrie Sharp. That's a powerful revelation from God. Don't you walk around like a tomb <laughs> filled with something. You get it? You walk around like you have been resurrected. And I cannot stay in the dead things, dead relationship, dead conversations. You get it? Get that mess out of your life and walk in the truth. And whom the Son has set free is true indeed. God, oh, it's free indeed. I should say true indeed. That's good too. Amen. Catch that. Philema. Philema, you got that? In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Rick, Reverend Rick, look at this right here. Here's my prayer. Thank you, Kim, so much. I pray that you will continue to experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power. Watch this. Made available to you through faith. This is Paul in the book of Ephesians. Here's where it gets good, though. Then your lives would be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. You got it? Look, then our lives, there it is right there, my life. <laughs> you got it? It's an empty tomb. Jesus got up. You got it? There's nothing in the tomb of my life. Then your lives would be an advertisement. You get it? You on showcase. After the resurrection, after Jesus got up in three days, he put us on showcase and the Holy Ghost came and filled us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Each and every one of us, you on showcase. It says it right here. Then your life will be an advertisement. Who wants your life to be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you? You got it? This is so powerful. And I believe this is for somebody that I feel Jesus. You know what? I feel like going on. Ah, thank you. I feel a resurrection right now. Hey, I'm sitting down. I, I'm not lifting the thing heavy, but I sure can cry out loud and let somebody know that we are an advertisement. It's in the scripture right there, Kim, of this immense power. What kind of power? Rescuing power, redeeming power, resurrection power. As it works through you. Look, this is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the what? Dead. Get out of that tomb. And exalted him to the highest place of honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. Look, this is so powerful right here. What? I'm on advertisement with what? This is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead. So the power that God released when Jesus got up on that third day, the wisdom of three days, here's what it was all about. It was that power that's working through you and I, and we're on advertisement. God got you on showcase. The devil might be messing with you. You get it? Things might be coming at you, but don't find it strange. God said that's just an opportunity for you to rise up and get out of the things that's trying to bury you. Don't you fear nothing. You walk in faith because God has you. Watch this. It's in the scripture right now. An advertisement, an advertisement, an advertisement of his immense power as it works through 
you and you and you. Oh, I wish somebody will really receive this. I see how Jesus felt now. When Jesus did signs, he was hoping that people would see there was so much more than the sign. He's a savior. Ah, Baba Shanda. Everybody put hashtag I'm on. I'm look, I'm on advertisement. You get it? Hashtag I am an advertisement. I have an itch. Amen. Look, I'm in the advertisement business for God. How do I say in the advertisement business for God? Amen. The advertisement business for God. How do I do that? I walk in. The resurrection power. You got it? Amen. You got it? In the name of Jesus. Amen. I see that, Joyce. I'm going to talk about that the next time I, because I haven't finished with this. I'm going to talk about the Lazarus thing. You, you're a prophet as Joyce Moses, but that's, that, that was the next place I was going in my next teaching, but I'm not teaching it tonight. I got to stay right here. Yeshika Moses. Amen. Everybody, I'm, you're, you're, you're an advertisement. You get it? I got on this shirt right here that says God first, but the greatest advertisement is my life and how I live it in the spirit. You get it? Everybody can wear something that talks about God, but all of us need to embrace something that represents an advertisement God in us. You got it? How do we do that? By simply being obedient to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You got that, Lee Ernest? Uh, uh, anointed advertisement. Praise God. The same power. This is so powerful. I'm going to read this one more time and I got one more verse. I'm done. I promise y'all like this right here. Then your lives, God, I thank you right now. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. Wow. What's that immense power? This is the power that was released. The power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. Jesus said, come up here to higher places where I am. Amen. Everybody in place. You're in a high place. And we humbly sit in this high place in God because of the power of God. Amen. You're in a high place. It's right there in the scriptures, you all. It's right there, exalting him to the place of highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. You get it? The highest place and the highest honor you can receive is to acknowledge Jesus as our savior and walk in this divine relationship with him and put the devil on notice and in place. Watch this now. Every day of our lives. And it's all because you're in this high place. I want y'all to receive this tonight. You all that was still bold enough to stay up here with me. You got this 30 or 40 folks that's up here. You all that was still bold enough. I want you to receive the fact that you're in a high place. That would keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, on Jesus. That's a high place. Think on these things, Francis. Think on these things, Marilyn, E. Matt Carter. Think on these things, Ayana. Think on these things, Betty Mac. Whatsoever things are lovely, Nancy Daniels. Whatsoever things are true. I'll get, catch this revelation. If they're being the virtue, if they're being the praise, Reverend Rick, think on these things. That's a high place. Keep your mind. You're in a high place, walking in supreme authority in the heavenly realm. It's how we think. We fight not against flesh and blood, Sylvia. We fight not against flesh and blood, Barbara Daniels. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against principality, but against principalities. But guess what, Zelita Barnes? I'm in a high place, Alice Levite. What about you? Well, how can I end this tonight? Oh, thank you all for your faithfulness. Colleen Killebrew, Mother Killebrew, thank you. Um, um, how, come on, Mary Cooper, how, how can I bring this in? You got it? How can I bring in this? Tonight, this wisdom of three days, this resurrection power, this rescuing power, this redeeming power. Here's how we can sum it up. In the book of Acts, the second chapter, the 40th verse and the 41st verse, the New Living Translation, the book of Acts. This is after the Holy Spirit came. You got it? 
and the Holy Spirit hit with his amazing self. The Holy Spirit came 50 days after the resurrection. The power shows up. Jesus ascended 40 days after the resurrection. Jesus went back to be with the Father. 50 days after the resurrection, you got it. The Holy Spirit came. You got it. The Holy Spirit came 10 days after the ascension. After the ascension. So when Jesus ascended to the Father, you got it. 10 days after that, the Holy Spirit came. You got it. Jesus ascended to the heavenly father, that highest place, 40 days after the resurrection. The Holy Spirit came 10 days after the resurrection. And here's a great example of the wisdom of three days and what it meant. Redeeming power, rescuing power, you got it, and resurrection power. Here's a great example of it right here. And I want you to receive this. The Holy Spirit has come and Peter acknowledged that now he understands the power, how to walk in the power and use the power. Peter pretty much said, I got the power. Watch this. Then Peter continued, then Peter continued preaching for a long time. Strongly urging all the listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. Everybody put a hashtag 3,000 reasons. <laughs> you see this? <laughs> this is after the Holy Spirit shows up. Peter begins to preach. And the, the teaching said that Peter, Peter continued preaching a long time. Strongly urging all his listeners, save yourself. Because they was like, what is this? What was this noise? You get it? This sign that we saw. Now, G, the, look, now Peter is teaching them to go beyond the sign and get to the Savior. He said, save yourself from this crooked generation. And that's a word for us today. With everything that's going on in politics and personal lives, you get it, in our government, we need to save ourselves from this crooked generation. There's a lot of crookedness going on. You got it? But I know a Christ that died for the crookedness that comes in our lives. You got it? And those who believe what Peter said were baptized. And watch us. And God added to the church that day, that day, about 3,000 in all. 3,000 reasons. 3,000 reasons to believe that there is redeeming power, rescuing power, and resurrection power. Peter preached with redeeming power. He talked, watch this, with rescuing power, and he brought in the resurrection power. And all these folks that were added on to the church, they came out of the tomb that day. And the Bible said they believed, and God added on to the church that day. 3,000 in all, about 3,000 in all. That right there is the wisdom, the wisdom of three days. The fact that when Peter preached and when he was finished and moving in the power of the Holy Spirit, we see a display of the power of God, all because Jesus got up in three days and the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is now flowing through Peter. And now God got Peter on advertisement. What are we going to do with the advertising moments that God has put in our lives? You got it? What are we going to do? This is a great example. So I want to say to each and every one of you tonight, I've been up here 48 minutes, almost an hour. I usually do 30 minutes. But guess what? It was worth it tonight. The wisdom of three days. Redeeming power. Rescuing power. Resurrection power. What did Peter do with the power? He went out and just told the story about Jesus. And God put him on advertisement. And the anointing began to flow with redeeming power, rescuing power. And he began to resurrect things. I speak right now in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will resurrect some things in your life and my life as we go forward. It's time, believers. 
It's time that we believe God for better and greater. It's time that we take our obedience to our entire level. That's why I am. God has trusted me with two ministries. You got it? I can't be two places at one time, but I am right now for those that are tapped in. But the Holy Spirit can. The Holy Spirit can. The only thing we got to do is take the power and let's embrace what God has trusted us with. Amen. May God continue to redeem you rescue you and resurrect you every day of your life. Why? Because you got the power. Great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Praise God. 3,000 reasons to exercise your power. Peter did it. Let God put you on advertisement by just doing it God's way. To God be the glory, Flora and Brenda Booker. To God be the glory. Let me pray right now in the name of Jesus. Let's end this tonight with this prayer. Hey, God bless you. Amen. Hey, man, man look at here. Kelvin Rand, my brother. Good to see you in here, Rumi. Thank you for tapping in tonight. And to our God be the glory. Remember, we got the power, the Holy Ghost power. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am so grateful that the word you gave us tonight, you said that in this crooked generation, right here, God, this word, that you've given us power, God, to deal with the crooked generation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will remind each and every one of us that you've emptied things out of our tomb. You got it. Situation, God that's trying to keep us down. And we have gotten up from that because Jesus got up. He couldn't stay in the tomb, God. You got it. So we'll let nothing stay in our lives that will remind us of death. We'll keep the tomb of our lives empty and will remind us of life, resurrection life, resurrection power that Jesus got up with. I thank you for healing I thank you for protecting someone tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for any struggles, God, that someone may be going through, God, that they will realize that you've given us the power to go for. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, just like George Moses put in here, I'm just so glad to be in that number. Peter preached in 3,000, came to you. May we walk in the advertisement that you have trusted us with just to be obedient and do it your way. I pray that you bless everybody, families up here tonight, God, and they will continue to walk in the power of the resurrection, the wisdom of three days. Just give me three days. And I promise you, I will rise again in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Keep the faith. And remember that Marilyn and I love each and every one of you with the love and resurrection power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you, Brenda Terrell. Keep the faith. Bless you, Rosalind. Hold it down for me now. Amen.